Hey, hey, welcome to another adventure in old code. Today we're going to take a look at what I expect to be uh, one of my brother's programs. It's called 7S. 7S. So let's... Okay, 7S. Let's have a look. It might not be my brother's program. Okay, uh, 62, um, well, that's cute. <sighs> okay, whoa, let's, um, let's, oh, boy, okay, let's try again. Okay, please wait while I roll, the... <laughs> I can't see it, let us put a break point, not a break point, uh, a wait. Let's put an empty for loop here. Um, uh, okay, I just want to be able to just do one. Okay, please wait while I roll two dice 2,000 times. Outcome, 56 out of 2,000 were a two, 116 were a 3, it goes up, up and up, 366 were 7, and then all the way down to 55 were 10, and 50, oh, that's 190 were 10, 98 were 10, and 55 were 10, I think those last two should be 11 and 12, so that's probably a mistake, but uh, the numbers seem to correspond with um, them being actually 11 and 12. Okay, least and most, least to most actual, and least to most theoretically. So theoretically, the seven should come out the most, and you can see, indeed, it, it did in our little experiment here. Six and eight should, in theory, show up the second most times, and that is precisely what we found. Uh, 5 and 9, again, are in their right positions. 4 and 10, 3 and 11, 12 and 2. And so 2,000 dice rolls actually creates quite a statistically accurate representation of the theoretical probabilities. And then we plot this graph of the outcome. Um, so sevens are in the middle, and I guess the two yellows theoretically should be the same, the two reds should be the same, and so on and so forth. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep. So that's kind of nice. So there's a this, there's two kinds of, of probabilities. There's the theoretical probability, which can be calculated, and then the practical probability, the experimental probability, which is just do something many, many, many times and see what happens. And the law of large numbers, I believe it was Jacob Bernoulli, one of the infamous Bernoulli brothers, who actually proved mathematically that given enough trials, the experimental probability will approach the theoretical probability. Um, so clearly, if we did this less than 2,000 times, like only 200 times, then... You can see 12s actually happened more than 3s, and that shouldn't have actually happened. We're not as perfect a distribution here. 4s were rolled more than 8s. That shouldn't happen. And then the probabilities are kind of screwed up. That's a really small graph. But anyway, okay, let's, let's look at this. I don't know who did this. It seems like kind of a thing I would do, so I'm curious. Um, oh yeah, this was added by me. Okay. 
Uh, okay, let's have a look. So we got our random number generator and we're randomizing the timer, clearing the screen, and we tell the user to wait. Okay, so for each, this is how we roll the dice. Random number for dice one and a random number for dice two and add them together and that's your value. That makes sense. That's very simple. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking. Eight. <laughs> Didn't... <laughs> okay. Um, so if the dice roll was a two, then you're going to increase the two variable. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have eleven and we have twelve. Um, so this would have best been done with arrays because we could have just said you know value and then in brackets dice you know so if you rolled an eight you know the value of eight would be increased by one but this is clearly before arrays were a thing i'm thinking this is me i'm thinking this is me before i knew arrays Um, of course, this spelling of eight is curious. I, 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 it's not like eight spelled correctly is a keyword or anything like that. Oh, well. So we keep track, and then we write the outcome. And we're just printing how many times we rolled a two out of 2,000. Rolls were two. Yeah. This is clearly a mistake. That should be 11 and that should be 12. But it was just the printed message that was wrong. Okay, and then we're sleeping, waiting for a key press. Oh, now uh, my thinking is that no, this is my brother. I don't think my... What is that noise? Well, that's outside. Uh, anyhow, that's really loud. Okay, someone's outside yelling for their grandma. Okay, um, I don't think it was my style to use the variable name dir, and so I think this is my brother now. I don't know. Okay, um, if dir e equals... Huh? Huh? Okay. Go from one to two. Th Wait a second. Uh, actually, that is pretty brilliant. See, the issue here is we need to sort this list from least to most, but we have six, eight, 11 different variables. If you remember a previous video, we, we, we did the bubble sort, but sorting algorithms only work when you are using arrays because you can, sp there's a lot of looping going on. And so without using arrays, how do you show a sorted list of 11 elements? Like you really have to go, the, the naive way is to say, well, look, if the value of two is greater than all of these, then print the value of whatever's in that variable two. Like you have to loop through 
all 11 variables and find which one is the highest. And then you have to loop through all the variables and find out which one's the next highest, the next highest, the next highest. And it becomes very cumbersome. This, on the other hand, says, look, I know that all these 11 values are between 1 and 2,000. Because you can't have rolled a value more than 2,000 times in 2,000 dice rolls. And you really can't have... This should probably be zero. <laughs> this assumes that every value was rolled at least once. But that's, that's a pretty safe bet to make. But so the looping... You go from 1 to 2,000. And once that marker hits the number of 2's, 2 gets printed to the screen. And so... What you're left with is a sorted, printed list on the screen. You don't have access to that sorted list after the loop, but this is a way of sorting it just for displaying purposes. And so that is great. So it keeps going. So if there were 56 twos, for instance, and 100 threes, then when Dur was 56, okay, Dur was the number of twos, then we print two first. We keep going through the loop. Now dir is 100. Oh, that's equal to three. So then we print three and two and three are printed in their actual order. That's pretty cool. At first it's like, why, why are you doing this? But how else are you gonna display a printed list, sorted list? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to print the least to most uh, in theory. And that never changes. 2 and 12, 3 and 11, 4 and 10, 5, 9, 6 and 8, and then 7. So that's cool. Then we sleep again. We're going to ask for more input. Clear the screen. Then we're going to screen 12. Print this graph of the outcome. And so the bottom of the graph is... Four hundred and fifty. That's very close to the bottom of the screen. Remember, it's four hundred and eighty pixels down. Um, and we're just going to every twenty pixels, starting at two hundred, will be another part of our histogram. It's more of a histogram. And so the way we're doing this is we're converting the actual number to pixels. There's no Yeah, there's no scaling here. So if there were 56 twos rolled, that two bar will be 56 pixels high. Um, so we're drawing a line from 450 up to 450 minus the number of twos. So if there were 50, it would draw the line from 450 to 400, which is goes straight up. And here's the different color. So that's that's the color green, which is the same color as 12, 4 and 4. Anyway, that's pretty darn cool. Okay, uh, then we're sleeping for two seconds. That's it. Awesome. So let's, let's have a look. Let's have some fun with this. First, I'm going to fix the graph. Um, I'm going to put a multiplier of... times our multiplier. And what that's going to do is allow me to scale out the graph. This could actually take some time. So that's done. Um, so if I make the multiplier 1, then everything should be normal. But this way I can do something else. 
we can say, okay, every time I do 2,000, it seems to work out pretty well. Um, but what if I only did 1,000? What happens then? So this is only 1,000, and you can see that it's a little, a little less great. Fives and nines are not together. Nines and uh, eights and sixes are not together. And the graph looks a little funky. And it's smaller. So that's why I added the, multi the multiplier. I can come down here. Ay, ay, ay. You know what? I'm going to move this up here. Okay, multiplier, and if I set it to 2, that graph will be big again. It still looks okay. So let's, let's have it even again. And this time our multiplier will be 4. Okay. Look at that graph. It's... It's still got some sort of a shape. So 500 is, is okay. We still got a little mix-up pieces. It's getting less awesome. We'll half it again and we'll make it 8. And again, it's not so bad. It's really not so bad. 7s are always the winner. So let's make the multiplier 16 and half this again. And now we're really, it's like, ugh. <laughs> okay, we're going to half it again. 62. Jump this up to 32. Yeah, so... Um, it's, it's funny, uh, this is 62 dice rolls, so let's make it about 30, 30, let's make it 39, and the reason I'm doing that will, will increase this to be like 55. Maybe we'll make it 50. That's too much. Uh, I am doing this. Here we go. Um, so I, I always enjoy playing a good game of Settlers of Catan. And I've played with people who <laughs> seem to be really... Um, you know, human intuition is that when something is random everything should follow a pattern. <laughs> and inherently, that's not what randomness is. Um, we like nice distributions, and patterns don't exist in true random sequences. But I've played with people... I've played Settlers of Catan with people, and, and the reason I chose Settlers of Catan is 30... whatever I chose here... Uh, 39 rolls of the dice is kind of kind of uh, as many rolls in a game of Settlers of Catan and you know if 11s are rolled way more often than 6s every you know people think that oh the universe is out to get them or something like that and I even knew of one person who actually thought that there was actually something almost spiritual going on. Um, anyway, uh, the, the, the case, that, but the, in reality, 39 rolls of the dice are not enough to give you that theoretical probability distribution. You can see here, this is representative of another game of Settlers of Catan. Sevens are rolled less than sixes or eights. They're even rolled less than threes. But when you take so few 
samples, this becomes possible. And 39 rolls of the dice are just not enough to see a nice distribution. Anyway, that's cool. Um, let's actually bring this up to 4,000 and we'll bring the multiplier down to 0 0.5. This should show a much nicer graph even than what we were seeing originally. Look at that, it's almost perfect. Almost perfect. And that's thanks to, I guess it's not thanks to uh, Jacob Bernoulli, but it is thanks to his, his law of large numbers that we can actually understand what's going on here. But true randomness, and these aren't true random values, these are pseudo-random values. Um, but it's, it's, it's random enough for our purposes. So with 4,000 dice rolls, we get this distribution. Very, very nice. Uh, we can even go up to 8,000. Knock this down to 0.25. And let's no longer do this waiting. Eight thousand dice rolls, and now things should be pretty perfect. Oh, actually, there is some variation between eights and sixes, but everything else, a few more twelves and twos. But anyway, that's a lot of large numbers, and that's also why games of board games don't necessarily have to follow these theoretical distributions because there just ain't enough samples. All right, well, thanks for joining me in this adventure in old code. That's been 7S, and it's been brought to you today by my brother, I'm pretty sure. All right, have a nice day, and we'll see you next time.